Welcome or welcome back to Babbling with Brooke, the podcast. I, of course, am Brooke, and today we're going to be talking all about Disney International programs and specifically the interview and application process for those. I thought this would be a good uh, episode to do today because the cultural exchange program applications did just reopen, actually, for summer 2023. So if you're still interested in that program, make sure to check that out fairly quickly because I think they're even going to close in the next, like, couple of days so if you're listening to this even like a week from now you may unfortunately be too late i did want to get this episode up for you all yesterday but unfortunately this week i have actually been really really sick um i've missed class and it was just not a good time overall my throat has been so sore i've been so stuffy i'm still recovering quite a bit so you're not going to hear the sniffles i'm definitely going to cut that out in between takes and um Also, my voice is hopefully going to be able to survive this whole thing, but if it sounds a little rough, that is unfortunately why I have been... We did our school open house um, last Saturday, and I think I picked something up from there. I was talking to quite literally hundreds of people, and yeah, I mean, I, I definitely picked something up from there, and it wasn't COVID or anything. I did do a test, and it came back negative. It was just a regular common cold, but not having had a common cold now for over a year um it sucks i forgot how much it sucks and literally on thursday i was in bed the entire day i went to bed at like i think it was like six or seven o'clock the night prior i woke up when my alarm went off for class around nine i lifted my head and was like no and went back to sleep and woke up at 3 p.m I'm not even joking you and I'm not like a sleeping in person so that was ridiculous and then literally at 3 p.m. I just woke up got food and like quickly and then went back to bed I was a little hungry when I was sick which is like very odd for me I'm not normally hungry when I was sick um but yeah the only thing that's still kind of weird is I still haven't been able to drink coffee it's just been tasting very off for me and I don't know why that is like nothing else is tasting weird or off or anything like that so I'm not sure why coffee specifically has been like the culprit but I just taste it and whenever I taste it it just tastes kind of burnt so I have been opting for green tea um or today I actually got a frozen lemonade from Tim Hortons because I had my Tim's points saved up so I got one of those and that was nice on my throat for class today but we are back in action so I am almost done college now y'all I have three weeks left um which is crazy three weeks left ever this weekend is easter weekend so i'm gonna be going home for easter obviously the weekend after that i'm also going home my parents are going on a trip to hawaii which is very exciting for them but it means that i will have to go home that second weekend just to make sure everything um is good with the house and the animals are watched over and everything else my sister will be there for the time being but at the same time like we have our little zoo at home so just helping out in any way i can with that um is going to be really valuable so i'm going to do that the weekend after that my friend laura is supposed to be coming to windsor to come hang out with me and see me here and uh, we're gonna go see a play and i believe some other stuff i'm not really sure i also work that weekend but we're gonna stay in a hotel that weekend and then the weekend after that is the weekend i move home so realistically i it's not even the weekend i move home like i'll be home at that point the last week is only like a half week so i'll be home at that point which is kind of insane um and that's the rest of college and then i graduate There is also 98 days as we're sitting here until I check in for my Disney cultural representative program. So I guess if you are here for just the Disney international program information and you've never, you know nothing about me, um, I have done three Disney cultural exchange programs. In 2018, I worked in merchandise. In 2019, I was a character attendant. And recently in 2022, just this past summer, I was in attractions at Smuggler's Run in Galaxy's Edge, which was so amazing. I was also recently accepted to the cultural representative program 
program for Canada. Obviously, I am Canadian, um, and I will be moving down to do that. I officially take flight on July 5th, but I check in on July 10th. And then the academic exchange program is another program that I am now very familiar with, even though I will never have done it. But I did make it to the interview stage and then unfortunately had to cancel my interview because of visa restrictions between the cultural representative and academic exchange program. So I wasn't declined by Disney for that. I just couldn't do it because the U.S. government wouldn't let me do the two programs together, basically. Um, And there was no way for me to change it around to make it work. So unfortunately, that is just the way it is. Yeah, so I'm going down for my cultural representative program. I just got the email today to submit my police check, which is already done. That was $40 I'll never see again, but I haven't committed a crime and it means I can work for Disney. Now I have to figure out health insurance. Health insurance works a little bit differently on the cultural representative program. I need to decide if the one through the yummy jobs one they send us is the one I want to do or not, just for my own medical needs, specifically regarding prescriptions I need to figure out what's up with that because I have a lot going on um if you haven't listened to my last episode which was all about kind of my mental health situation um add on top of that that I also need prescriptions and stuff for my allergies and I get sick a lot and everything else so um prescriptions are very important for me for that but Anyway, today we are talking Disney International programs, the interview process, and application process. And let's first, right off the bat, talk about the cultural exchange program, because I feel like, A, it's the one most people are probably looking into. It's definitely the most popular program out of all the programs. It's the one the most people do, um, and it's the one that people are probably looking for the most information on, to be honest. So you can do the Disney cultural exchange program, which is a J-1 visa to work down in Walt Disney World for last year it was 10 weeks but in the previous it's usually like May to August or whatever dates they give you it's over the summer basically you have to be a student or have immediately graduated so if you graduate in April you can start in May if you graduate in December I do not believe you can do the program like that following summer if you graduate in August or something you definitely can't like you have to do it there can't be a semester gap in between like you got to do it immediately after graduation and you can work in that program in a ton of different roles across Walt Disney World properly property properly property and this ranges from a ton of things from of course working attractions um, to working merchandise to working recreation so like a water slide operator one of my friends worked mini golf last year Um, literally like a ton of different roles across Walt Disney World property. It is not the same number of roles as the Disney College program, which is for American students. There's really no reason as to why. The only reason, like my personal speculation, not fact, personal speculation, is just because of the amount of training it takes for some of these roles as to why they do not want um, to spend all this time training people for them just to leave in a couple of months. And those are roles like photo pass and children's activities and those kind of roles. But as for cultural exchange program roles, there's like 10 or 15 or something different potential roles that you could be in and those have changed over the past couple years so there's a ton of options and you could be at like any location across Walt Disney World so Disney Springs the water parks the resort hotels or any of the four theme parks you could be anywhere within that the only catch to this is you cannot extend your program you cannot go full-time after, you cannot go part-time after, you cannot go seasonal, you cannot extend your visa, none of that. You have to go home when your program ends. There's no if ands, or buts about it. That is just how it goes. Um, you cannot stay in Disney. You cannot get a green card out of this. You you can't. You come for the couple months. You have up to 30 days after if you want to travel the States, but you got to leave housing and all that when your program's done, and you, you got to leave the USA and go back to your home country. As for the academic exchange program, um, if you are a student of very specifically a tourism, hospitality, or culinary program, and your college has, has already established a partnership with a USA college, then you can do the academic exchange program. 
So this is where a USA college, so Disney does not sponsor this visa, the US college will sponsor the visa and send students to Walt Disney World for the semester to work while also taking classes. So this program runs a little bit differently. So actually each academic exchange program with every college works a little bit differently. So because it's run through the college, depending on how it's run, depends on which college you go to. Some colleges, you'll go to that college first. So for example, a lot of schools out in British Columbia in Canada will go to a school in like San Francisco or something for a couple weeks to do the classes and then move to Walt Disney World to do the working. Same with University of Florida and like University of Waterloo, I believe, do that kind of stuff too. My college is St. Clair College in Ontario, and we do our partnership with the University of Central Michigan. So Central Michigan University runs that program. There is nothing that happens at Central Michigan University. You just go straight to Orlando and do the course requirements and that down there. So you do not have to go to Central Michigan University, like you don't have to st step foot on the property. Um, and you'll be down there for five to six months. So from July, this year's dates are July 17th until December 14th. So you're there for a lot longer and it practically is the Disney College program. There's more role options that are available. Um, they're still limited, so you're not as many as the actual Disney College program, but you're there for that semester long, like the Disney College program. You're being sponsored through an American college, so it's it's very similar to the college program. You just have that educational component. And once again, you have to be in a tourism, hospitality, or culinary program. And I didn't say before, but I will say, you have to have completed one year of studies for both the cultural exchange program and the academic exchange program before you can do these programs. So you have to have been in school for a year before you can do these programs. So that's important to note. You are also not able to extend this program. Some schools in the UK can do this program for up to a year. The Canadians can only do it for six months and I believe that is a US government policy, not a Disney policy as well. So something to note. As for the cultural representative program, this is a Q1 visa, which means it's a cultural representation visa. So you are there to represent your culture and your country, my case, Canada. There is no schooling requirement and people do this program at quite literally any age, like all ages do this program. People will do this program like once they're you know, married, kids moved out, retired, then they go live their Disney dream. People do it when they have kids. People do this program all the time because some people, especially if you get into serving, make a ton of money on this program. So they will do this program like five, six, seven, eight, nine times um, because they make so much money. If, if you know how much money Disney servers make, like it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, the amounts that they make, especially off of like tips and that. So yeah, um, but you can only work in your pavilion when you are on this program. So the other programs that we talked about, you can work anywhere in Walt Disney World. This one, you can only work in the Canada pavilion. So in Canada, or I guess whatever pavilion you're in, in Canada, there's three roles. So you can be in merchandise, which is the merchandise stores in the Canada pavilion, obviously. There's attractions, which is the Canada show. And there's food and beverage, which means you kind of do a bunch of different roles within there. So you start out at like the popcorn cart and the beer cart. You move to Cedar, and then some people move to server at that point. So there's kind of that... Um, situation but there's only the three roles you can do and that is a one-year program so you're automatically contracted for one year my dates are july 10th to july 4th so it's like one year minus one week basically but i mean let's be honest i'm gonna get hotel and stay there for longer than the one year because i believe you still have that 30-day travel requirement that you can do after this is the only program that you can extend and you can extend for up to a total of 15 months so three months in addition to the 12 months that you're already contracted for and disney may or may not offer these contracts it'll be based on business needs so there's no guarantees you're even going to get that opportunity to extend um this past year some people got the opportunity in some roles and other roles didn't unfortunately so there's really no guarantee which way it's going to be i am potentially hoping to extend if given that option but if i'm not given that option that is okay as well that's just you know 
know how the cookie crumbles, I guess you could say. So now getting into the actual application process. Once again, cultural exchange program. And all of these application processes are going to be so, so, so different depending on what program you're doing. And that's why it's important to know the differences. So cultural exchange process is... I mean, the cultural exchange program you're going to want to do for summer employment, basically. It's going to be your summer job. You don't have to be in any specific program of study for it. This is going to be your summer job. Um, you're actually going to apply for it usually in the fall. So um, in 2023, there was one week that applications were open for in December. They were just open for one week. Now, in the past, they've opened in September, October, November. This year, it was December. And then they reopened again in 2022. They didn't bring back the programs till April. So they opened in April. And once again, this year, they reopened in April. There's no guarantee that's going to happen, though. So if you see the application and you know you want to do the program, I recommend applying for it in the fall because like they're they might not open in april again so just be wary of that um after you apply at some point it could be a couple weeks later it could be a couple days later it could quite literally be a couple months later i've waited three plus months before you're gonna get an email for interviews interviews usually happen in late december january february somewhere in there they're going to have in-person interviews for people who have never done the program before and zoom interviews for alumni so the in-person interviews are going to be in vancouver montreal toronto and i don't remember if they were in quebec city or not recently i know they have been in the past but those are the cities you're going to want to look at for that and unfortunately sometimes they make exceptions but 99.9% .9 of the time you're gonna have to find a way to get there so if you live in like Winnipeg or something unfortunately you are gonna have to fly out to one of these cities um stay in a hotel all that stuff as for my experience mine was at the Disney office in Toronto they no longer do it in the Disney office in Toronto back in 2018 was when mine was so Disney was still operating like full offices in, offices in Toronto they hadn't like shut that down yet or anything and it was a super cool experience basically you go to this building and it's like I said it's not like this anymore but this was my experience you go to this building right on front street right outside of the CN tower you go in and Disney's office is like one of the high floors right so you get off the elevator and there's these quite literal glass doors with a frosted Mickey Mouse head on it and they open up like towards you and you walk in and the office is like like you walked like Mickey Mouse threw up on the office basically it's the coolest thing they've got like it's classy but also in like the most Disney way possible. Like it's it's exactly what you think it would be. They have life-size statues there of Star Wars characters, I believe it was when I was there. And unbelievable. Literally, we were in the kitchen for a little bit because you had to wait for your interview time. And um, they had like Disney appliances there and stuff too. It was super, super cool. You look out the window and you have to like press your face up against the glass and look up to see the top of the CN Tower is how close you were to the CN Tower, like the dead of downtown Toronto. It was the coolest experience. And how it's going to start, no matter where you are going to be doing your interview, is it's going to start with a one hour presentation. So you go in for the presentation, they tell you about the program, they tell you the dates, what roles are available, ask if anyone has any questions, um, and the presentation is usually an hour long. And after that, there are time slots. So when you get that email about your interview, you'll sign up for a time slot, which is a one hour time slot. And sometime within that time slot, your name will be called and you can go interview and the interview times are like 10 minutes or so long and then you leave and then you wait to hear back and sometimes you're waiting weeks to hear back sometimes you're waiting days no one really knows but sooner or later you will hear back and the cool part for a lot of people is this program is no longer as exclusive as it used to be or at least the last two years it definitely is not as exclusive as it used to be these programs used to be extremely competitive the cultural exchange program um people would get rejected left right center like they were extremely competitive but disney has been in a place right now since the pandemic where they have such a high business need that they're not declining anyone who is eligible um 
I know people with tons of points who were able to get in. I know people with past programs who self-termed halfway through their program who were able to get in. Like, they're not saying no to people, um, which is, like, a little concerning in some cases, but that's another story for another day. Um, but basically they're they're not it's not really as competitive anymore so obviously try your hardest be professional but um don't be as concerned about it as everyone used to be and then of course like i said alumni have the phone interview process so it's the same kind of thing i don't know if they do the presentation anymore but um for alumni i I don't know. I mean, my 2019 interview was a phone interview, and I guess now it's Zoom. So, not phone interviews anymore, but they'll do Zoom interviews, and that's what my 2022 interview was, but at the same time, 2022, because pandemic stuff, everyone's interviews were Zoom interviews, like first-timers or alumni, so neither here nor there. Um, It's going to be phone or Zoom. As for the academic exchange process, this is going to be very different once again. So back in October, Central Michigan University came right to my college. So the representative who runs the program from Central Michigan University came to St. Clair College and we sat in like this room and he did a presentation on what the program was all about and everything about it and answered questions and all that stuff. In December, the applications opened up and they told us in advance exactly when the applications were opened, which just so happened to be the same day actually as the cultural exchange program um, applications opened. So I don't know if that's the same every year or if it was just kind of a coincidence this year or whatnot, but the applications were open in December and they closed January 27th, which once again, they told us when they were going to close. Right in that first meeting when Central Michigan came, they're like, this is when the applications open, this is when they close, this is exactly how and when you apply. So we applied on the Yummy Jobs website, which is very different than the cultural exchange program where you apply on the Disney website. For Canadians, if you are from the UK, you're going to apply on the Yummy Jobs website. And once again, if you're from a different college or university than St. Clair College, you might also apply on a different website for the academic exchange program than Yummy Jobs. Your college is going to tell you all of that when you go to the place. You're then going to be invited to a Yummy Jobs pre-screen interview if Yummy Jobs looks over your application and says you look good. And the pre-screen interview was so nice and easy. And I talked to Alexis from Yummy Jobs and she was the sweetest. I love talking to her and our interview lasted about 10 minutes. She just asked me basically why I wanted to do another program and she was super sweet to talk to. A little bit after that, I heard back that I will be getting a final round interview. So this is, yes, a two-round interview. The Yummy Jobs pre-screen interview was a Zoom call uh, for the record because Yummy Jobs is based in the UK and I'm in Canada and they're not going to expect you to go to the UK. So that was a pre-screen. Um, heard back, I heard back just saying, like, you've passed, we'll let you know more information when the time comes. And then one day I randomly got an email inviting me to apply again. And I was like, what? Okay. So this time this email was from Disney specifically, and it invited me to apply to the academic exchange program through the Disney website. So you had to get a specialized link like this is by email invite only basically i submitted the exact same resume the exact same cover letter i already knew i was moving on to the next stage of the interview so this is more or less a formality at this point to get you into the disney system from here you're gonna get an interview email from disney and this works the exact same as the cultural exchange program process where you're gonna get an interview inviting you to the you're going to get an email inviting you to the interview, literally the exact same email, except this is academic exchange program instead of cultural exchange program. You're going to have an in-person interview. And in that in-person interview, you're going to have a presentation for the first hour, same thing, same information, and an interview time slot at one of the hours later. So it's the exact same thing. The only cool part about this is the interview actually took place at my school. So I wasn't going to have to travel anywhere for this. And at this point, like I was still going through this process thinking I was doing this program. So this is kind of the point I made it up to. Um, So interview at my school, it was, when was the interview date? It was just like the end of March. So yeah, all this happened like 
quite a bit of time span thinking I applied the beginning of December and these second round interviews were just happening in March. And the in-person interviews are going to be a Central Michigan University representative, so the same guy that came to talk to us at the beginning of the semester, uh, in the previous semester in October, and also with the Disney recruiter, who is currently Danielle, um, and she does all the Disney recruiting, all the international program recruiting for Canada. So she came to St. Clair College along with the Central Michigan University representative. And you do that presentation interview. And then you're going to hear back. In this case, everyone actually found out whether or not they're getting the job in the interview. And everyone once again got accepted for the job. And I quote Danielle or sub quote, I guess. It's, I heard it from someone who I will not say that a very trustworthy source that Danielle said that if you get to the interview process you've you've got it yummy jobs is amazing at screening people so the yummy jobs interview is a little bit more of that interview that matters in this case yummy jobs kind of screens the people and then Disney's just kind of double checking that so both interviews obviously very 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 important um, but that yummy jobs one especially if you pass the yummy jobs one you should feel fairly confident but obviously still you do your best on the um, secondary interview and then yeah and then you hear back and that is how that process goes as for the cultural representative program for Canadians um, I do not know how I the other processes work I know all the other countries' processes work very, very differently, but applications can open at any time. No one knows. They're completely random. In this past time, they opened in April, I believe, or like late March or something. I think it was late March. Anyway, and but it's it's completely random. There's no not necessarily a warning. There's no special time of year. Sometimes they're open. Sometimes they're not. And traditionally you're going to hear about an interview in Toronto or Vancouver if you are selected. So sorry, back up a second. You apply, you're just going to fill out the application, submit your cover letter, resume. When you hear about an interview, it's going to be in Toronto or Vancouver and you don't get to choose and you have to go there. So one of my friends from Montreal had to fly to Vancouver for her interview to interview there because that is where they selected her to go and interview. So you just, if, if you're serious about these programs, just be prepared that you are going to need to travel for these interviews potentially. As for my interview, once again, it was during that kind of COVID period. So I was lucky enough to get a Zoom virtual interview and it was just like a quick 10 minutes interview. Like it was, it was very easy, actually one of the best, easiest interviews I've ever done. Not saying it'll be like that for other people in the future, but um they knew I was alumni and they'd only accepted alumni to come back and they were super desperate to get those pavilions back open. So I think that's a lot of reason a lot of us got accepted for the cultural representative program. I'm assuming in the future applications are going to be a lot more just harder in general to get into because there will be more applicants in that competitive nature again, whereas this time they, I believe once again, everyone that got offered an interview got accepted for those positions. I don't think it's going to be like that in the future, but basically you have a presentation and then you go to your interview. So mine was a Zoom presentation on a specific date and then the interview a couple days later, but if you're in person, it'll be the same process. So the first hour in the morning is going to be your presentation and then one hour interview slots after that. And then you're either going to be accepted or you're going to be put on a wait list. And wait list is not as scary as if you're put on a wait list for the academic or cultural exchange program. If you're put on a wait list for the cultural exchange or academic exchange program, it means that they're seeing if they have a spot for you. They're not sure. They don't know yet and you might get in, you might not. As for wait list for the cultural representative program, this means that they have a spot for you, they just don't know what your start date's going to be yet. So for example, I did my interview, I ended up doing it in May. I was on the wait list until March of this year when I accepted my, I got an offer letter for, well, it was originally for December, but I'm going in July. I got my offer letter for July over March break this year. So up until that point, I was 
on the wait list so they knew that i was going to be going but they just didn't have a date for me yet and there have been people that were on the wait list like we were almost on the wait list for a year so there's really it's kind of unknown as to when you're going to be or how long you're going to be on that wait list it's quite literally just a waiting game for when you're going to get that offer unfortunately now um and then after that i got accepted and that is the application process and all of that so i do maybe want to make this into a series diving more into individual programs potentially like i can't really talk anymore on the application or on the process for the academic exchange program because i'm not doing it and i have never done it but for the cultural exchange program and the cultural representative program i would really love to dive deeper into those processes of everything you kind of need to figure out before you go so please i don't know maybe go comment on one of my instagram posts on the podcast instagram babbling with brooke pod so maybe go do that and let me know kind of what you want to hear about with these programs i would love to do one on just kind of the processes and the steps from after you accept to when you actually leave or something like that so let me know if you're interested in that i also have this kind of idea of just like documenting like diary style maybe of just what's going on in my life um step by step while i am preparing for this program because i think that would be really cool and then maybe doing like a a check-in once a month or something um on the podcast while i am down there too just giving those kind of updates but let me know what you think of that anyway thank you so much for listening to today's episode i hope it helped you and informed you a little bit and um also maybe you learned a little bit about my personal process i don't know but thank you so much for listening and i hope you have a magical rest of your day (laughs) 